Morning, time for some actual electrical content. There's a lot of light going off in this video for reasons you'll see in a minute, but there's a lot of light going off. I appreciate that a lot like I'm in a prop studio. Because I sort of am, but I need a lot of light for what I'm going to show off. So I was going to do this just as a video for YouTube, but I can't do videos that aren't one minute long. It just doesn't propel me to do a good video. But someone sent me this. Uh, it's from the post bag. I did a little from the post bag thing the other day. Well, it's because on YouTube, this will form part of that. But what's in here, I asked for and someone delivered. So, uh, I have already opened it for reasons that will become apparent, but let me show you what's going up. But first, I want to stop that light wobbling around because that's getting on my tits. So if you watch my name regularly, which you probably shouldn't because I'll teach to say the word cunt a lot, you should know that I'm into my relays and stuff. Right? I'm into controls and relays. These are relays. You've probably seen ones like this. These are the most common looking ones, especially this one. This is like your bog standard beans on toast relay that you get all the time. And they just work. I always say to people, it's like tug of war. Yeah, one side's mechanical, one side's electrical. The only thing connecting them is the rope. And that's what happens is you can put any voltage into here that you get the call right for, and it'll switch a voltage on the outside. So I'm into a relays and that, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. And I pretty much work with all the different types of relays you get from old ones to new ones in control panels and stuff. But there's one particular relay that's evaded my capture for a number of years. And on here, the other week, because people like to watch this stuff, I said, has anyone got a specific type of relay? And someone messaged me and says, I've got one of those relays. And I can lend you it because, as you're about to see, it's a bit of an oddity. So uh, we'll dive into the box and I'll show you what's going off. When you control machines and things like that, or just stuff that's not like live critical, I hate it when that bing is off in the background. <laughs> stuff that's like not live critical, use a relay, yeah? The worst that can happen with this is it doesn't work and a machine doesn't work or something doesn't fuck it. Or a machine crashes into itself, something like that. But when you're dealing with a critical life safety, Something like this just isn't going to cut it. Now, I'm going to show you something that I know nothing about. And I'm just going to make me assumption. So this isn't, a, this isn't a exactly how these things work. This is my interpretation of what I've got in that box. And hopefully the person that sent it me will correct me or people will correct me. And I'll put a little bit more out about it. Because this is a relay that doesn't look like this kind of relay. Because it's a very special relay. I'll crack it open and have a look instead of just teasing you. Over the next couple of months, we're going to do a few videos on things I don't know anything about. Because... Then I'll learn more. But this one in here, I've had to undo it, right? I'd love to pretend this is a proper unboxing, but it's not. I've already undone it, yeah, for reasons because these are serial numbered. Because this is. Look at that. That's why it's so much light. That is a railway signaling relay. Look at that beast. Look how big and chunky the contacts are. Look at the size of that coil. Look how visually inspectable it is. Look at what's going off in there. It is absolutely mental. First time I've ever touched one. Yeah, I've never been, I've never done anything on relays. <coughs> These sit in relay rooms on real lays. <coughs> relay rooms on real lays. Rooms <coughs> on real lays. <coughs> relay rooms on railways. And there'll be hundreds if not thousands of them because on a railway you have to do something called interlocking this again right just just let's correct this yeah i don't know what i'm on about this is my best guess and at the end of the day if you know nothing you might learn something from me so yeah relays do interlocking and on railways you need that so the person that got me this i'm very grateful to you thank you very much sent him out. he sent it me out of his own money as well which i'm always very grateful for i've undone it and i've covered the serial numbers up yeah because it would be identifiable, because these will be logged and kept in excellent condition. So just under there, it's 50 volts, which I think it must be some kind of railway voltage for signalling. I'm guessing. I don't know. I'm guessing these are unique voltage, so that you have to buy a unique relay, so you don't like... So some dickhead don't come along and get one of these and replace it with one of these, and then, I don't know, a train derail or something like that. But the person that sent me this, paid for it out of their own money, I'm going to return it to them out of my money, and I'm very grateful for sending it to me. I don't know what particular one this is. I, I understand that there are many different types of railway relays, and that that would click into a big old base, which comes on a big, there's like a big base of pins. And if you look in there, look, you'll see it's got lots of different space where pins can go. But down here, which I think is a coil, you see how it's got these six little holes, but then the pins are in there. I believe they are pinned. So you can use any of those pins. I think they're common. Yeah, so as far as we're lot. I think you can use any of those holes down there for these pins. I think that's the positive neg for the coil, right? But what the crack is, is that they're pinned so that if you was to pull this out 
and you wanted to put it back in, one, you won't be able to put it back in the wrong place because the pinning would be different. It just won't fit. Male to female, it wouldn't fit because the pin draw in the wrong place. So what I'm guessing is that it's a, it's what I would call an anti-reflex. So that if you do pull it out and you replace it, you've then got to take it apart. I'm guessing by removing that screw behind that label, which I can't do because this is not mine. You then make sure it works and, and sell it, set, calibrate and set up exactly as to be replaced. It's then replaced the serial numbers of note down and it's obviously all has to be it has to be done properly it's not like you're just whipping relay based that it's not like getting one of these in a factory going that one don't work try that one oh yeah it works it's sound this is designed to stop people randomly moving a relay and having a train derail on them so yeah then some other things about it is obviously it's designed to fit onto a bespoke base i believe they're big trays of them in a relay re railway relay room i might put some pictures when this is on youtube of that And these will sit there click clack in the background because obviously if a train's in one place, you don't want another train there. So when a train goes into a place, it would activate a relay, which would tell all the signaling behind it to go red. Not quite that simple because it's amber's in red and stuff and red, but it does that. Because of its life critical safety build, it's got a massive coil. Look at the size of that coil. That coil is gigantic. I'm guessing the bigger coil uses less current. I don't know. For the movement... But anyway, it doesn't, whatever it does, it doesn't strain itself. So when the coil activates, it pulls that massive, huge piece of metal there, which then just shifts these little tiny contacts. Quite a big spring in there as well, look. So maybe that has got to shift quite a bit of stuff. It's got to force these contacts. It, when this moves, it moves because it gets told to. So when you're doing safety circuits and these stop circuits, you get what they call force relays, as in the fact that if I shut this about now or hit it, those contacts aren't going to move under inertia. That spring is keeping them where they should be until that coil is energised. Then this huge lever arm puts the right amount of force on to shift them. If you shake that, you will never, ever move those contacts because that is the way it is specifically designed so that knocks and bumps can't do it. So that's the thing. So yeah, the massive coil, this huge lever, the spring that you have to force past and then contacts for whatever they do. This one's got, that's normally closed, that's normally closed, that's normally closed, that's normally closed. I don't know what they're doing, but yeah, that's as much as I can probably go into about it. It's obviously all glass topped, so it's inspectable. It's been ins it's been made first inspection, second inspection, and finally it gets three different inspections before it even gets out of the factory because it's critical to safety. Yeah, manufactured by Siemens. It's got a date on it. It says 2015. It says 2015. Now that's I don't think that's an inspection date. I would dare to guess that this was manufactured in 2015. Siemens probably have a specialist department just manufacturing railway relays. And the reason it looks old is because that when they invented railway systems, they invented them under probably British Rail, and they come up with all the technology to do it, the systems to do it, yeah? Those systems will not have hardly changed because simple electromechanical systems that stop trains from crashing into, into each other are best left as simple electromechanical systems that stop trains crashing into each other. I imagine it's got some sort of computer control behind it now, but it still relies on the old fact of the... Switching at when a train goes past, moving a coil, moving a switch is the most reliable way of doing it. I don't think you can really go by chin. It's got a handle for pulling it locks so and don't break it. Glass top for the inspections. I can't go much more into it than that, really. Yeah, if you do know anything more about this that I've missed or want to tell me anything, tell me and I'll do a follow up video. Because this is just like this is out of the post bag. I've just literally got it out of the post and I'm telling you what I've seen now. It really is just a nice thing. Proper electromechanical, old school technology. Yeah probably deriving from like the 30s 40s 50s something like that so that'll be going on the bench for a little bit oh for the guy the guys must be messing me again because i fucking lost you they'll see a message yeah and tell me a bit more about it because it really is uh, a real oddity and i can't imagine there's a, an endless amount of people on instagram or youtube showing off railway relays well there isn't because i looked but yeah even down to the, the construction just demands a lot proper decent thick contacts double-sided contacts so if one of them don't make the other one does real nice bit of shit so thank you very much for that and we might see that again but it's got to go back so i can't start whacking 50 volts into it i don't believe but if you're the person that sent it man let me know what the situation was with this and i might try and put 50 volts into it